Hello, friends. I believe one of the greatest gifts that you can give to another human being is allowing them to be fully who they are, to be fully seen for who they are, what they stand for, and who they want to become in the world. I'm Stephanie Filardi. Welcome to Mind the Gap, the podcast. I believe many people fall short of living the life of their dreams simply because they get stuck in what I call the gap. The vision behind this podcast is to help you understand how to navigate the gap and in the process, awaken to the life that is waiting for you. It starts now. Let's go. Let's begin by taking three conscious breaths. So inhale, fill the belly, the ribs, and the chest. Exhale, release out of the mouth. Let it go with a sigh. And then again, inhale, filling up, expanding through the chest. And then when you're ready to release, let it go. Exhale, sigh it out. And one more time, inhale, filling up, belly, ribs, and chest. Exhale, sweet release, letting it go. So today I want to talk about this idea of being seen in the world. And it connects to the previous episodes where I talked about our personal power and also the most recent episode, which was a culmination of the relationship episodes, which seem to be quite popular. Not surprising since everything is relational whether we're having personal relationships, professional relationships, and everything in between, in order to experience a full life, we really need to learn how to navigate relationships. So I hope you listened and I hope you gained some insight and wisdom. And more importantly, I hope that you're actually applying some of the things that I discussed because it's really in the application of these concepts where we start to see things shift. So the reason why I want to discuss being seen is because it is connected very much so in relationship. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a background in terms of how I grew up. Because one of the things that I experienced as a child was feeling like I wasn't seen and I wasn't heard. And without having to go into the detail of why that was the case, it's one of the things in my life and one of the the areas in my life that I've really struggled with for a very long time. And what ended up happening for me was I wanted to always make everybody feel comfortable. And I wanted to not ruffle anybody's feathers because I somehow, somehow during this process of childhood, I believed that I was too much, that in some way I was a burden. And I carried that story and that belief with me for many, many, many years. It probably wasn't well until my 30s where I really understood the impact of that story that was playing in the background of being too much or being a burden. And and in essence, what was happening was that because as a child, I felt like I wasn't seen or heard or understood, right, especially as a child, then some way I had to hide. So I wasn't able to really fully be myself. And one of the most 
important lessons that I have learned on this journey of life so far is that when we really allow ourselves to be vulnerable and to be seen for all of our perfections and imperfections, it's a really incredibly powerful and freeing way to live because then we're not really afraid of anything, right? If we're constantly concerned about what I'm saying and what I'm doing and how people are going to react, ultimately that's going to limit who we are, right? Because we're always going to be so concerned about how we're coming across, looking good, being right. And I've talked about this in the power episode, that oftentimes what it creates within us is a sense of feeling shut down. And for me, that creates a sense of feeling powerless and helpless, And it's not really fun. So part of the excitement that I've experienced in life is when I was able to recognize that I was afraid to be fully seen for who I was and who I am. So in my intelligence and my beauty and also in my quirkiness and my vulnerability, in my in the space of me being a person who isn't really much of a rule follower who really likes to kind of beat to my own drum. And for a very long time, I feel that my fear of being fully seen was related to this, again, another false story or belief that if I was fully who I am in the world, that I would be abandoned, that somehow people would leave me, again, because I would be too much. So it's an interesting thing to kind of look at in your own life. And really, the invitation for you today is to look at the places where maybe you aren't fully who you are. And how does that show up, right? How are you being in the world if you're not wanting to be seen? Are you stifling your voice? Are you not expressing yourself in some way, whether that's creatively um, or any other way? So it's not only being seen by the people who maybe love you, but it's also being seen in the world. So it's a big concept. And once I was able to understand that I was coming from a place of being afraid to be seen, then I could get busy working on the underlying beliefs regarding that, which was, like I said, one of the main ones was that I would be abandoned because in some way I made other people uncomfortable which also led to many years of going out of my way to try to make people feel comfortable. And the lesson there, which is extremely freeing, is that it's not my responsibility to make other people feel comfortable, right? Because everybody's different. So if I make you comfortable, I make I might make someone else uncomfortable. And it's also quite exhausting, to show up in the world in such a way and be afraid of really who I was and who I am is tiring and it gets old. So my invitation for you today is to th- think about the areas in your life where maybe you're not allowing yourself to be fully seen. And that can be anything from, like I said, using your voice and expressing yourself to also maybe ways where you're vulnerable, where you're not allowing yourself to really be who you are. So whether you're being emotional or whether you're being not emotional, whatever that is for you, noticing where in your life are you not allowing yourself to be fully seen? And one of the things that I'll share with you is that, you know, one of the quotes that I read a long time ago by Joseph Campbell is, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. The privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. And why that quote has struck me so profoundly is because when we recognize that each and every one of us matters, when we realize that each and every one of us has a contribution to make to planet Earth, then we really understand the power of truly being who we are. So all of the areas where we're not being authentic, 
where we're not allowing ourselves to be seen because we're afraid that people are going to judge us or leave us or not understand us or whatever the variations of that are. We're actually doing a disservice, not only to ourself, but to the world because we're not sharing our gifts. So as I began to realize that I had this fear, paralyzing at times, of truly being seen and truly being who I am, when I realized that, I recognized that there's so many gifts that I have that I haven't been giving. And then in some way, even though I have felt myself to be a, a giver in the world, I was actually being a taker. Right. So let me repeat that again. So some of us, you know, walk around and we, we help others. Right. And, and we try to be good and we try to give and we're generous. And yet if we're not being ourselves fully and we're not being authentic, it is a form of taking because we all have something to offer. And that's part of this conversation today about really allowing yourself to be seen, to, to play with that. And it could start small. And usually I suggest that you do start small, right? And notice the places where you're not allowing yourself to be seen. So it could be as simply as not speaking up, not giving your opinion when it's asked, right? Or not advocating for something that's important to you because you're afraid of what other people are going to think. And start to play with allowing yourself to be seen because chances are those things that you're repressing, are the same things that are going to help the world and help yourself. They're your gifts, right? Oftentimes, the things that we hold in the dark or the things that we're afraid of are the exact things that need to come forth, right? That need to come forth. So I want to leave you with this idea that we all matter and that each and every one of us was born for a reason, And it could be a grand reason. It could be because you are on this planet to impact millions or billions of people in the work that you do in the world. And it could be that your contribution is taking care of animals in some way or raising a family or supporting someone who's raising a family. So it it varies, right? And it's not about judging yourself or comparing yourself to somebody else. What it is about is about getting clear about who you are and why you are here. And the only way you can really make that massive contribution is by understanding what the gifts are that are within you that you can bring forth. And I promise you, when you start to uncover those gifts, it will give you the courage to step out, to step outside of your comfort zone, to start really examining in more with more curiosity and patience and compassion, what are the limiting beliefs or what is the story that you've told yourself that you've inherited maybe? that keeps you, that holds you back, that keeps you stuck, that keeps you in that place of not really allowing yourself to be fully seen. And something else I want to add to this is, you know, I've had the the beautiful, I guess, fortune and privilege of having some tremendous love relationships throughout my life. So, so not only with certain members of my family, but also in romantic relationships. And one of the biggest gifts that I have ever received in those relationships is total and complete acceptance and unconditional love. Meaning these people not only allowed me to be who I am and encouraged me to be seen, but they help bring it out in me by really being that source of unconditional love. So that's something that I want you to also think about. You know, we, we oftentimes throw around the word unconditional love. And I don't know that we all totally understand it because probably most of us didn't receive that or have that experience a hundred percent of the time growing up, whoever raised us. So this is an opportunity to, you know, kind of side by side, look at what that means to you. What does it mean to be unconditionally loved? And then to offer that to somebody else in your life simply because you choose to. And I'll say that that's part of my work in the world is to unconditionally love myself and then in the process, unconditionally love others. 
Because like always, we start with ourself. It starts with us. It starts with recognizing who we are and where we need to grow. And as we grow, we're able to grow alongside others. So consider the possibility. Consider the possibility that when you allow yourself to fully be seen, that magic happens, that you can make a contribution And I'm sure you already are making a contribution because you're listening to this podcast, right? So you're a special group of people already that you're taking the time to listen to these podcasts, which are designed to help you awaken, right? They'll help you to look, to look at the areas of your life that are not working, right? Because our life is the evidence to look at the places where things are not working and then to do something about it, to decide to take action. So as I close today, remember that all of us are here for a reason, that each and every one of us matter on Team Earth. We're in it together. We are in it together. And that if you're able to truly give yourself permission to be who you are, to be seen, and to practice being unconditionally loving with yourself and with others, I promise you your entire world will shift. And it's a gift that you can continuously give to other people for no reason at all other than that's the world that you choose to live in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your presence. And I look forward to watching you thrive. If you find this podcast helpful and if it provokes you in any way, meaning you love what I have to say, or maybe you don't like it because it triggers you, awesome. I've moved something in you and perhaps you will want to share this with someone else in your life who might be interested in being moved. So you can find us on Apple, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and as always, Feel free to share links with people you love because remember, we are in relationship with each other. So the more that you are present and you invite other people on the journey, the more peaceful world we will live in because we will be together understanding these concepts. So I thank you for your support and you help us keep the show going by sharing it, by liking it, by giving us reviews and helping us to grow. Thank you.